let me just first say our hearts go out to uh, Ms. Robinson's family um, and friends. It is devastating what occurred uh, and certainly um, uh, the, the tragedy is just devastating. And we've been following the news here. As we dig deeper and deeper into the results of investigation so far on the death of Shanquella Robinson, it is starting to seem obvious that she didn't die of alcohol poisoning. Right now, her family members have sent letters to the United States government, and this has been forwarded to the FBI to handle. What have the FBI uncovered? And could the person attacking the victim in the viral video finally answer for their crimes? This video has it all. So be sure to stick around until the end because number one is guaranteed to shock you. Before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below saying I have subscribed and I will personally reply to your comment. Let us begin. Number five, three stories that don't add up. Three of the six friends expected to be with Shanquella Robinson at the Cabo Resort are Khalil Dejeuner and Winter. Initially, their names were not published after the news of Shanquella Robinson's death went viral, but those close to the group have now declassified the information. However, the U.S. government is yet to publicly provide the names of the group that made the trip to Cabo, Mexico with Shanquella Robinson. In one interview, Bernard Robinson, Shanquella Robinson's father, said the family got the news about their daughter's death from Khalil, Dejeuner, and Winter when they came to drop off the luggage of their late daughter after returning from Cabo. However, what remained a mystery to the family was that Khalil, Dejeuner, and Winter told them that their daughter had died due to alcohol poisoning. In an interview with GMA, Shanquella Robinson's mom, Salamandra Robinson, said the family began to suspect that the late daughter's friend may be complicit in what led to her death when they visited the family to explain what went down in Cabo. She said Shanquella Robinson's friends came individually to explain their side of the story. Still, from every statement they provided, it was easy to detect that something was not adding up because they all contradicted each other. Also, Quilla, Shanquella Robinson's elder sister, said when Khalil visited their family, she noticed that he was nervous throughout the conversation. So when the autopsy report came in from Mexico, it was obvious that Shanquella Robinson was murdered by her friends. Hence, the alcohol poisoning was just a cook-up story to divert the public attention from the heinous crime. Number four, the viral video reveals all. A few days after the autopsy was released, rare footage of Shanquella Robinson being beaten by one of her friends surfaced on social media. The video footage gave credence to Shanquella Robinson's family's assumption to call for a full-blown investigation about what transpired between their late daughter and her friends. In the video, where Shanquella Robinson was viciously attacked, another person was inside the room recording the fight. An anonymous source revealed that the person who was heard in the background during the fight, which many people believed possibly led to Shanquella Robinson's death, was the one recording the fight. Surprisingly, the person was one of Shanquella Robinson's friends. Another reason why Shanquella Robinson's family believed their late daughter's friends were complicit in her murder was hinged on the fact that they already got information that there was an in-house fight amongst the friends. Shanquella Robinson's mom also told ABC News the people that she was with, I knew one of them very well and I thought that he was her friend and he would look out for her, she added, but unfortunately, that's not what it was. Number three, the concierge said the whole killing was predetermined. The concierge assigned to the villa where Shanquella Robinson was allegedly murdered by her friends has been supporting the authorities in Mexico with key information about what happened on the day of the incident. In his testimony, the concierge said he noticed Shanquella Robinson was the only person indifferent among her friends. She was also the last person to arrive at the villa amongst her friends. Suni Jaseel Popoca Milan, who was assigned to the villa, said he checked into the villa immediately after he got the information about what happened to Shanquella Robinson. He said his reason for visiting the friends after the incident was to offer his condolences to Dejanay Jackson, but to his great surprise, Dejanay Jackson's emotions were cold. It was like nothing serious happened. On leaving the villa where the friends were housed, the concierge said he heard them laughing out loud. And a few minutes after he stepped outside, he was called upon by Shanquella Robinson's friends who asked him to help them make transportation arrangements that could take them out on a dinner. But the whole idea of going to dinner 
was later confirmed to be a decoy. The concierge said Shanquella Robinson's friends never went to dinner as they had told him earlier. Instead, they went straight to the airport. He said he got the information that Dejanate Jackson and five others spent the night in a hotel close to their airport before jetting out of Mexico the following morning. On getting to the villa the next morning, the concierge said he was informed that the group had checked out. Suni Jaseel Popoca Milan said he immediately texted the group's leader, but to his utmost surprise, she responded to his text message on the 31st of October, 2022. The text revealed that the group had left Mexico and they were back in the United States. Suni Jaseel Popoca Milan said that when he saw the viral video showing how Shanquella Robinson was attacked, he knew that the group deceived him when they asked him to help them arrange a reliable transport that could take them to dinner. Adding to the story, he pointed out that as of 1.15 p.m. on the day Shanquella Robinson was killed, he got a text message from the suspect asking him if there was a chance to get a medical facility because one of her friends was showing symptoms of alcohol poisoning. He said the doctor assigned to the resident came in around 2 p.m. to give Shanquella Robinson an IV. An hour after the doctor's arrival, Shanquella Robinson did not respond to treatment, and by 3 p.m., she was confirmed dead by cardiac arrest. But there was a mix-up when the police arrived at the scene. Contrary to the doctor's report, the police document showed that Shanquella Robinson died between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. When the doctor arrived at the emergency and the police came to carry out the site investigation, no one knew what happened. They did not have any prior information that someone in the group filmed what transpired between Shanquella Robinson and the suspect. The concierge, in his testimony, also confirmed to the police in Mexico that the other woman seen pushing and punching Shanquella Robinson was the same person he was in contact with all through the period he arrived at the scene till the group's sudden disappearance. Number two, the Department of Justice won't be pressing charges. Despite the damning and glaring evidence available to the U.S. Department of Justice and the prosecutor's office, the U.S. Government Justice Department said the government would not be pressing charges in a recently issued statement. The official statement from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of North Carolina said the U.S. government has decided not to press charges because the available evidence does not support federal prosecution. However, the U.S. government, through the Attorney's Office, said the position of the U.S. government on the case might change, provided there is new information. With the U.S. Attorney's Office slamming the door on any possible investigation and prosecution of members of the Cabo 6 group, Shanquella Robinson's family, through their representatives, are asking the U.S. President Joe Biden and Secretary of State Anthony J. Blinken to intervene in the matter. A part of the message sent by the Robinsons reads, the President or the Secretary of State must step in and ask for the extradition of the suspect or prosecute the case stateside. Shanquella Robinson's family are asking the U.S. president to accede to the demands put forward by the Mexican government on the extradition of the yet-to-be-named U.S. citizen whom the Mexican government deemed as the direct aggressor in the widely circulated video detailing the last moments of Shanquella Robinson's life. Apart from the letter sent to the U.S. President Joe Biden by Shanquella Robinson's family, the family also sent along details from the deceased autopsy report, which was carried out in Mexico before the body was brought back to the U.S. Speaking on why they sent a lengthy message to the U.S. President, Shanquella Robinson's representatives, Sue Ann Robinson and Ben Crump, said the family took the decision because they don't want to leave any room for the U.S. government to say they are dropping the case because they weren't furnished with the necessary details that are needed to prosecute the case. On the extradition, Shanquella Robinson's representative said they want the U.S. government to apply the same principle that was applied when four U.S. citizens were kidnapped in Mexico. Number one, United States government responds. Responding to the Robinson's request, the White House Press Secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, said 
The White House said Shanquella Robinson's family request had been well received, but declined to formally comment on the matter. The White House press secretary referred the matter to the State Department and FBI for further investigation. Speaking on behalf of the U.S. president, Karine Jean-Pierre said President Joe Biden expresses his condolences to Shanquella Robinson's family. Also commenting on the case, the federal police said they acknowledge that Shanquella Robinson's death is difficult for her family and the community at large, but they assured the family they would get to the root of the matter. And that's a wrap for today's video. You can let us know what you think in the comment section. And if you enjoyed today's video, we bet you'll enjoy the others that we have for you. So don't hesitate to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button to get up to date on all our amazing videos. And hit that notification bell so you never have to miss an update from our channel. Check out this related video to see more. I will see you in the next video.